on to introduce Mike, our speaker for tonight, Mike Unger. Mike has done has done many successful in-person birding classes for Salem Audubon. Um, and then with the onset of the pandemic, he was quickly able to transition to presenting his classes as educational webinars. We have much to thank Mike for, as he has been instrumental in helping us learn how to do our chapter meetings, our board meetings, and our classes on this Zoom platform. Tonight, his talk is on winter birding in Southeast Arizona. I know a high percentage of you who are birders have birded in Southeast Arizona, but mostly we aim for the very popular months of May and June during the peak season, you might say. But tonight, or April, May, and June are the peak season. Tonight, he will concentrate on the birds you would see if you went to Southeast Arizona in the winter months. The winter months there are considered to be December, January, and February. During, during Mike's program, please type any questions you have for Mike uh, by clicking on the chat button and typing your question. At the end of his program, Kathy Patterson will read the questions to him and then we'll have the question answer session with Mike. Um, so Mike, I'll let you take it away. Okay, thank you very much, Judy. I'll go ahead and share my screen. Move a few things around. So let's get started. Southeast Arizona, as Bill Walton would say, it doesn't get any better than this. The Sonoran Desert, the Sky Islands, Tucson, good weather, the cactus and birds galore. What more could you ask for? Uh, we, we live in the greatest place on earth. So let's find out about this desert paradise and how you can enjoy it. So some people have asked, well, why talk about winter birding now? It's uh, spring and not even summer yet. Well, one of the main reasons we're doing this now is so that you can plan ahead when COVID finally gets over, as Tim said, in October, hopefully we'll be to the point where a lot of things will open up and you'll be able to plan your trip to Southeast Arizona. To me, one of the most wonderful places in the world. So here's the map of the Tucson area. We're, and here's Tucson right here. So some of the places we're going to talk about tonight are the Santa Cruz Flats up here north of Tucson. We're talking about Madera Canyon, just half an hour south. Then we're going to go way down to the San Rafael Valley that's uh, near the border with Mexico. But it's still relatively pretty safe to go there. Then also we're going to go out here to the Sulphur Springs Valley. So uh, there's quite a bit of uh, area to cover and uh, we'll also talk about Sweetwater Wetlands, which is a wonderful place right in Tucson. So here you can see uh, the city of Tucson downtown. In the background, you have the Santa Catalina Mountains. Um, now, um, Tucson's probably about 500,000 uh, people it's really a large spread out city, 240 square miles. Now in comparison, Portland's about 650,000 and 133 square miles. Generally in the winter, the weather is pretty good. Although on the right, you can see the picture, sometimes it does snow. Um, luckily it doesn't last very long, uh, maybe a day at the most. Uh, in fact, uh, a few years back, I was wearing shorts way up until December 14th. 
which is pretty good. In November, December through February, generally the temperatures are 65 to 73 degrees with lows around 39 to 46 degrees. Uh, there are some fluctuations and like we say, some freezing temperatures, but overall it's really uh, nice. Uh, the worst month is June and that's when it averages 100 degrees. Uh, can you believe it? Saguaro cactus stand out against another magnificent uh, sunset. Later on, we'll see some monsoons coming in also, but uh, it's just a really wonderful, tranquil place. It's varied landscapes. No, it isn't just all desert. There's some scrubs, and you can see oak, oak tail here. Uh, and after the monsoons, you can see the nice blooms, red blooms on it. There's nice valleys here, and you can see a road going up uh, here that uh, you can walk up. But there's a lot of grasslands around. And, uh, here you can see nice cotton fields, and they do other lots of other agricultural with a climate with 300 days of sunshine uh, makes it pretty easy to uh, grow things there. Here's some other habitats. You can see a nice sunset here. Landscapes of cactus. And there are a few places with water, although they can't be few and far between. Here's uh, uh, Santa Cruz Flats. This is the first place we'll talk about. This is Picasso Peak, uh, just north of Tucson, probably about an hour um, north of Tucson, just to the uh, left of the mountain here to the west are the Sawtooth Mountains, and uh, that's where Santa Cruz Flats is located. Here's a photo. Um, generally, Tucson is down here to the south. You'll see the arrow pointing down here. You just go up I-10. The main freeway is just like I-5. Uh, I like to come here to Red Rock and drive back here and go to the Red Rock feedlot, come along here, cut across here, and you go down Baumgartner Road and Wheeler Road and you just start driving all these different roads out here. Most of them are all gravel. Here's the evergreen turf farm. That's where in the winter uh, there's uh, several birds you can see, including uh, the moving dirt clod that we'll see in a little bit. You can see this is just barely in Pinal County. Here's some of the edges of the road. Uh, and you can see a lot of birds hiding in these, this brush and uh, grasses on the edges of the road. Here are some of the rarities that you can see in the winter. And all these have been reported at uh, Santa Cruz Flats. Some pretty rare birds. And here, here you can see some of the grasslands and there's a river that's right nearby there in Santa Cruz Flats. There's some trees uh, there too that you can go and look for um, black catchers and the like. The Santa Cruz Flats, um, on the travel count, uh, there's six uh, hot spots there and one of them is called the travel count, and that one has 224 species uh, total, and it has between 150 to 156 during the winter. Uh, that's December, January, February. Um, and so as you can see, that's well, that's almost uh, three fourths of the birds that you can see that's been seen there are during the winter. 
along one of the roads is the burrowing owls. Usually they're standing out here outside their burrow. Sometimes here in the background, you can see young ones. Uh, that's one exciting thing about this, this uh, Santa Cruz Flats. Here's the other, the moving dirt clod. Uh, this is a mountain plover. Uh, they can be far out in the field sometimes, and so a scope does help. And this is another bird that people like to see in the winter. They're usually there by December or crested caracara. Believe it or not, it's in the falcon family. Seems more like a hawk. Some other ones you can see sprakes, pipit, horned lark. Now next we're going to go to the Sulphur Springs uh, Valley. This is a great place for uh, wintering raptors, ferruginous hawks, and the like. You can see the Chiricahuas here in the background. There's a lot of cattle uh, ranches around this area. Uh, this is a typical road, a gravel road with uh, open fields. So the hawks like to come out in these fields and uh, find the rodents and stuff in the fields. This is the entrance uh, to uh, Whitewater Draw Wildlife Area. It's a great place. Um, it's quite a ways down south. It usually takes about an hour and a half, hour, hour and uh, three quarters to get down there, but it's well worth the uh, trip just off Kaufman Road in McNeil, Arizona. The eBird count here is 306 species and uh, 172 to 186 during the winter. So again, over half uh, of the birds seen here are in the winter. Here's a little map of it. You come in off Kaufman Road and there's that little arch here coming to the entrance. There's parking and a rest from here, more parking. Then there's a little hay barn here. You can go in that hay barn and a lot of times there's some nesting owls uh, there, great horned owls. There's also some uh, fence, a fence along here, and I like to look along this fence line. You can sometimes see um, loggerhead shrikes there, and they might even have some of their prey on the barbed wire fence there. Then I next walk around here. You can see ducks, shorebirds in here, but of course for whitewater draw, um, one of the main birds is, um, just a second here. There is the loggerhead shrike and uh, the great horned owl. We have both of those there. You can see the little hook bill here on the shrike. But, this is what white water draw is known for, the sandhill cranes. Uh, usually, we had a real good year this past year. Usually, there's 30 to 40,000 sandhill cranes that uh, stay here during the winter. And in fact, the farmers are paid to uh, let some of the corn just stay in their fields. And early in the morning, all these sandhill cranes take off in the morning and go up to the fields and feed. And then in the late afternoon, they start all coming back. It's quite a spectacle uh, to see it. Let's have a little video here. See it Sulphur Springs Valley is a closed basin surrounded by mountains. An increasing number of cranes call it home for the winter. The greater sand hills come from the northern prairie pothole states, uh, Idaho, 
the Dakotas, uh, Nebraska, and all is where they breed. The lesser sand eels make an even longer migration. They come from the north slope of Alaska and Canada, and about 20,000 of them come across the Bering Strait from Siberia. Tom Wood works for the Southeastern Arizona Bird Observatory. This is a relatively new phenomenon here in Southeastern Arizona. 50 or 100 years ago, there were very few sandhill cranes here, and a couple of things have happened. One has been the growth of agriculture, and agriculture is really a benefit to the cranes. In wintertime, water drains from the nearby mountains and forms these playas, or temporary lakes, which are perfect for wintering cranes. The cranes like these shallow bodies of water that can get out in the water and uh, be safe from bobcats and coyotes. If the cranes uh, leave this playa lake early in the morning, fly out to the cornfields and feed on the waste grain, the corn that was missed by the mechanical pickers, uh, and then come back here mid-morning and loaf the rest of the day. So the farmers don't mind the cranes. In fact, they like the cranes because they're cleaning up the waste corn. After a tough morning of eating all the corn they can find, the cranes return to the playa to rest and digest. Sandhill cranes mate for life and stay together in family units. It's easy to pick out families of three or four birds, even in the air. For many birds, migration is instinctive, but sandhill cranes have to learn to relocate. The young birds are taught the finer points of migration by their parents. Among the lessons learned by these birds, this is a good place to spend the winter. There you can see it's quite a spectacle um, to see all the creams come in. Um, now we're going to continue on down Sulphur Springs Valley. And there's a lot of, as I said, there's a lot of fields around. Some of the things you can see are the ferruginous hawk. Ben Dyer Thrasher has been seen there, uh, Lark Bunnings. Scaled Quail is a wonderful bird, bird to see. Really like all the scaling here on his breast. And they do have Eastern Meadowlarks there, the Lillian subspecies. Next, we'll go to the San Rafael grasslands. Uh, that's the one that's south of Patagonia. Probably takes about almost two hours to get there, but as you can see, it's well worth the trip. And quite a few uh, different birds down there, including long spurs. Here you can see the road. It's just so tranquil out there and quiet. You don't get much traffic. You want to look along the edges of these fence lines here, especially early in the morning. You can see long spurs, uh, uh, the sparrow, different sparrow species. Down here in these trees, uh, uh, we've seen chipping sparrows, but you can see just quite a few different things. Here's, it is first thing in the morning on the right and then later in the evening on the left. Also golden eagle would be a possibility of seeing down there. Of course the chestnut colored long spur. You can see the chestnut on the back of it. Um, another one that you can see, grasshopper sparrows, savanna sparrows. Down in this area, the total number of birds on eBird is 202, with 119 to 131 during the winter. Some other birds you can see, Baird sparrow, Vesper sparrow, winter over there. White-tailed kite would be another one. 
They really like the prairie dogs. And there's a Merlin, the prairie Merlin, unlike our subspecies, which I believe is a black Merlin. Next, we're going to go to the Patton Center of Hummingbirds. Tucson Audubon recently, a few years ago, took this over after the Pattons passed away. Um, the family didn't want to sell it. And so um, luckily, instead of selling it, the owner that closed it down, um, the American Birding uh, 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 Conservation uh, Group uh, purchased it and then turned it over for day-to-day -day operations uh, to the Tucson Audubon. Here you can see they have a nice cover. They're making a lot of improvements uh, down here. It's looking different all the time, but all along here, you can see the hummingbird feeders. They string all along here. Uh, there's a pile here that a lot of uh, birds like to be around the pile. There's some other feeder, feeders here for goldfinches. This tree, you can um, watch for nut hatches. Back in the back here, they have some feeders and oranges and things for Orioles and for the um, Cardinals. And there's another pile over here where you can see canyon wrens and quite a few other birds, but it's just a great place to uh, come and just sit and the, watch the birds. Sonoida Creek runs right next to it. Probably won't see much water in it during the winter. That's is probably after the monsoons. Here's one of the hiking paths. They have a few signs explaining the habitat. And this is the butterflies, and they actually have a butterfly garden there also. On eBird at Patton Center, 242 species total, with 120 to 139 during the winter. And now we'll see the star of the show the violet crowned hummingbird. Just a wonderful little hummingbird. Almost every time I've gone there, I've been able to see this bird. Along the creek too, in some of the trees, you can see gray hawks. Quite a few of these pictures are taken by a local uh, photographer and uh, Salem Audubon member Roxy Evans, and she took some of these when I took a trip down with them to uh, Arizona in February just before COVID hit. And uh, here's the Violet Crown Hummingbird again, Canyon Toey. You can see the rusty undertail coverts rump. Rufus wing sparrows, there's quite a few Rufus wing sparrows around. And here we have an Abert's toey with the black around his face, long tail. Now we're gonna move to Madera Canyon. This is just uh, go down from Tucson, down I-19, uh, just uh, near Green Valley. About a half an hour from downtown Tucson. And another wonderful place with uh, great birds. This is Mount Wrightson that towers above uh, the canyon. This is in Santa Cruz County. This is Proctor Road. This is one of the first parking areas that you come to in Madera Canyon. They have a nice paved trail through here. It's a big roundabout and just uh, goes around a group of trees and you can come back on the same trail. You can see a lot of birds here in these trees, including I've seen elegant trogon here. And this is the creek running through uh, Madeira Canyon. Here's 
Here, this is uh, looking out from the parking lot at Proctor Road. This is Elephant Head out here. We have some Ocotillo here. This next place here on the right is just, a, I, I know I keep saying this is a great place, but there's so many places in that, that are wonderful there to see birds. This is the Santa Rita Lodge. They have a lot of feeders here, great for taking photos. The birds come up pretty close to you. Um, it's one of my favorite places uh, there. And the bird list for um, Santa Rita Lodge, 177 species, but during the winter, only 74 to 80, but there's still some good ones that you can see there. Of course, unfortunately, we won't see the elegant trogan, but you just can't leave the picture of that out uh, of it. But you could see Arizona woodpecker, the only ground back woodpecker in the United States. The yellow-eyed junco, there's quite a few of those around. And of course, there's lots of hummingbirds, broad-billed hummingbirds. We'll see a couple of other ones. There's uh, Rivoli's. Oh, there's a spelling here. There's R-I-B-O-L-I-S. Rivoli's hummingbird. It used to be magnificent hummingbird. And the broad-tailed hummingbird. It's a hummingbird of the higher elevations. You can really tell those. It's sort of when it flies, it has this wing beat that uh, gives a neat sound out as it flies. A pack tanager, see quite a few of those there. <clears throat> and the bright oak titmouse is another nice bird you can see there. They have all these turkeys around and just uh, running around down in the grasses. Sometimes you can see them crossing the road. I usually count around 16 uh, wild turkeys there. They're the Gould's uh, subspecies. And then also there's uh, Kowatis there, Kowati for short. Uh, it's basically, just picture a raccoon with a slimmer body and a longer tail and snout. Uh, they sleep in the trees and they like elevation for uh, 4,500 to 7,000 feet. But you'll see them walking around there. They've never bothered me. They have a little store there too that it's always nice to patronize the store there at Santa Rita Lodge. The owner, uh, very nice and uh, got to know Steve very well since I was going up there all the time. And, uh, so it is a really nice spot. Next, we're going to go to Sweetwater Wetlands. This is right in Tucson. Here's one of the back ponds. Usually there's quite a few ducks and coots on the pond. Here you can sort of see an outline of uh, all the ponds. You park right over here. There's a parking lot here and a parking lot over here. Uh, they do have restrooms right here. And you just walk, there's a little creek here and you can just stand right here and watch those bushes and you can see all kinds of, uh, sometimes you see warblers, gold pinches. Over in there's these trees, sometimes vireos and uh, woodpeckers. Then you walk across a little bridge, you can take this little walking loop. There's a little um, place here, a uh, photo uh, spot where you can look out over this pond here. You can continue to walk around here, but I like to just keep going through here. There's a lot of trees along the edges here to look at. And I've seen a black and white warbler here and uh, quite a few different warblers right along this edge. And I just keep walking around, come around. I cut across here, come here. And there's another little platform here. You can look over this pond. 
usually walk back here and you can cut across and walk along this edge. There's another little place that you can uh, walk out here and look over this pond, lots of ducks. Then you come down in through here. Here's where you can see like uh, the common gallinule, um, your um, Virginia rails and things like that all through here. There's trees lining here too that uh, have a lot of birds sometimes. Along this edge here, you can look out onto these big ponds. Sometimes they have water in them, sometimes they don't. And sometimes you can see a lot of shorebirds out there, depending on the time of the year. But I just continue walking along here and you'll walk along, keep your eye out for shorebirds in here. And you'll come back and come back to the bridge and you can go back to the parking lot. Also, I like to just either walk or drive right down this edge along here. A lot of gambles, quail, you can see a roadrunner along here. Uh, quite a few different uh, birds. I would say if there's any one place you want to go to when you're in Tucson, this is it. Normally I go there two or three times uh, during the week I'm there because uh, eBird, 310 species here including 179 to 185 during the winter. So about two thirds of the birds uh, seen there are seen in the winter. Here you can see uh, the trail. This is the paved trail. And you can see these trees I was talking about. You just, this line of trees, you can just walk through them. And all these bushes along here have birds in them. Here's the unimproved trail, pretty flat gravel trails, but lots of bushes on each side of you. See warblers in some of these bushes along here. Here's the gazebo uh, overlooking the pond. There's a bobcat. There are bobcats and once in a while I've seen a cougar there. Luckily the cougars have been way on the other side, way over here. But the bobcats, I've seen them right along the edge on the far side over there. But they just keep walking by you and I haven't been bothered by one. Some of the birds you can see here, black throat sparrow, curbell thrasher, now, I'm going to play just a couple of songs, since this isn't a bird ID uh, presentation, but here's some of the common birds that you'll hear quite often. The little wit wit, wheat wheat, sort of like a whistle. My wife could just do that little whistle there, and they would call right back to her. You hear this quite often. Bill Thrasher. See if I can get it to stop. Okay, and then the Gila woodpecker would be another common, one of the most common woodpeckers there. Although you can, can get the ladder back here also. Here's the Gila. It's going to sound like a squeaky toy. But you hear those all around. in the ladder back. Here's uh, one of my wife's favorite birds, the vermilion flycatcher. Of course, this is the male, but it's just a lovely bird. And here we have a pair of cactus rings. It sounds like an engine trying to start up. You'll hear quite a few of those all over. Of course, the Roadrunner, the Greater Roadrunner, 
Here's the common calendar we talked about with the red on the face. Now I do have another sound that we hear in the desert, but even though I have it on this page, um, it is not the Roadrunner, it's a Northern Cardinal. So here's, especially this second set here. Quite often while you're walking out, there, you'll hear that sort of siren type sound uh, from the Northern Cardinal. Okay, there we go. Now, let's talk about, we're going to talk about some other things. It, although it's a lot about birding and mostly about birding, it isn't all about birding. So we'll talk about a few other places. You can stay, Hampton Inns down there are really good. Um, places to stay. I usually stay there. VRBO and the Airbnb. Have some, I've stayed at VRBO two places down there. They've turned out to be very good. The Double Tree by uh, the Hilton. That's right in the center of town near Reed Park. Another great park to visit. Uh, that's where the uh, Southeast Arizona Birding Festival, their, their main headquarters in August. Of course, you could stay at the Santa Rita Lodge. It's a little expensive, but uh, it's a nice place to stay. And then down further south, uh, near Hereford, that's just a little south of Sierra Vista, uh, this Batiste Bed and Breakfast is a great place. Tony is a great guy and uh, good bird photographer and likes to talk about the birds around. Places to eat. Of course, they have tons of places to eat. Probably almost in my order of preference, close. But I really like this El Charo Cafe, uh, good Mexican food. The street tacos are great here at this place. We'll show you. Uh, it's in a nice setting, too. Tucson Tamale Company, great tamales. See Mimi's general. Um, I know Tim, he really likes the Mexican seafood. They have a couple of nice brew pubs there. And Tim and Carol got me hooked on gelato. So now I have to stop at gelato all the time when I'm down there, which is a wonderful Italian ice cream dish. Here you can see the outside of the main Shepard, uh, El Charo downtown. And see inside, um, very casual dining. I like the Tamale Temptation Trio. Uh, it's really good and you get three different uh, tamales. It's one of the oldest Mexican restaurants established in 1922. Uh, the, it's the nation's oldest Mexican restaurant in continuous operation by the same family and has traditional Northern Mexico and Sonoran style uh, foods. The, and believe it or not, the chimichanga was originated at this restaurant. Now there's other area attractions too. Sometimes I'll just go birding in the morning and then in the afternoon I can take a side trip. The uh, Arizona Sonora Desert Museum is just a wonderful place. Uh, all kinds of exhibits. I believe it costs about $14 uh, for seniors. I normally, uh, when I'm going down there two or three times a year, like I will be this year, buy a season's pass, good for two. I think that's around 75. The Sandy Xavier Mission, we'll see that in a little bit. The White Dove of the Desert, of course, Saguaro National Park, Tumacocri, lovely historic park. The Tohono Shul Park is um, a nice botanical garden. My friend Jeff down there introduced me to Colossal Cave Mountain Park. Also, you can take a trip uh, guided tour through the cave and it's a warm weather cave. So 
So you, you just can go in your short sleeves, even if it was uh, 40 degrees out. Kit Peak is really neat. It's probably about an hour uh, west of Tucson, and they have about 11 big giant telescopes there. This uh, mine tour is really good. You could actually take a trip on a bus and they'll take you all through the mine tour and explain how they extract copper. And Sabino Canyon, Catalina State Park. Here's the White Dove of the Desert, uh, San Xavier Mission. Really neat. Now, if you go there on Sundays, you can um, buy um, different Mexican foods uh, there. This is Tumacacri, an old mission. There's a lot of history here, and you can take a tour through here. If you have your National Parks Pass, uh, then you can just get in for free. There's no cost for San Xavier Mission either. This is Sabino Canyon. Good hiking here. A creek running right through it also. Shopping. Of course, everybody still likes to go out and shop. They do have a lot of nice stores. Uh, Chubok is a neat little a uh, tourist town with lots of uh, neat little shops. It's probably about uh, 40 minutes south of Tucson on I off I-19. The Mercado, we'll show you that in a little bit in downtown Tucson. The big shopping centers are Park Place or uh, La Encantada. On Wednesdays, they have a Green Valley Farmer's Market and there's new premium outlets uh, off I-10, a little north of uh, Tucson uh, in Marana. Here you can see Tubac and some of the little stores along here. They really get decorated for certain times of the year, including Christmas. Here's that Mercado San Augustine. And here's their little patio for dining. They have several restaurants right around the edges here. In fact, this is where that C's taco is, where the street taco is. I would compare them to um, oh, the taco place down here um, on, I guess it's Liberty Street or um, uh, just off Union Street. Now, some other birds people come to see, the Montezuma quail, the Five Stripes Sparrow, the Scots Oriole and Lucifer Hummingbird. Um, now, if you go to Ash Canyon Bed and Breakfast, that's uh, down just south of Sierra Vista. On one day, my wife and I saw uh, the Montezuma quail, the Scots Oreo, and the Lucifer hummingbird all on the same day. You used to have to go way down to the Mexican border uh, to see the five stripe sparrow, and it's called California Gulch. And boy, it was down this windy, bumpy road uh, out in the middle of nowhere. But now they've moved up a little to the north, and now you can go near Madera Canyon. Instead of turning off the Madera Canyon, you turn to the left and go up towards Florida Canyon and continue over as though you were going to Highway 83 and it's called Box Canyon and they're nesting there now. So um, they probably won't be there in winter, but if you get there in the nesting season, the Five Stripes Sparrow is a great one. So that concludes my presentation. We can take and answer any questions. Let's see, uh, Georgina asked, or Georgine asked, uh, where are you staying this time? I'm staying at the Hampton Ale on Wilmot uh, when I go down to this next time. 
uh, would we be able to find a convenient place to camp with our low camp trailer? Um, good question. I, yes, you should be able to find some nice places to camp. One of the best places I would say that are close to the Great Birds is camp at Lake Patagonia State Park near Patagonia. Um, you can put up your own hummingbird feeder there or other bird feeders. Uh, during the winter, they normally have these little boat trips that you can go out and um, look all the birds along the lake. In fact, then there's a birding trail at the one end of Lake Patagonia. I've seen uh, lots of woodpeckers and I've seen elegant trogon down there. Um, there's quite a few, uh, but that's one of the best camping places I can think of just off the top of my head. How necessary is how necessary is to have a scope? Uh, that necessary? Truth. Most of the times, I don't have my scope. Uh, yes, birds are pretty close and great in numbers. There's another question from Carolyn Holman. Um, are there insect issues? And uh, would uh, spring and summer have more insects than say winter? Or how, what uh, is the Yes, that's one of the reasons why, why I like the winter because you don't have an insect problem. But in the summer, like here, I'm gonna make the trip again here this summer, even though I said I'd never do it again. But with COVID and stuff, I'm just dying to get down there. Um, so they have chiggers and mosquitoes and, uh, you have to wear uh, a lot of insect spray and stuff and tuck in your socks and your pants and stuff. Uh, Tim can allude to this, but when I we were down there last time, August, um, I had bigger bites all over my lower leg and it took about a month for them to go away. During the winter is not a problem. I probably prefer February, I think, uh, either early... Uh, December or February are probably the best months for the winter. I think Anthony has a question and his mic is open if you'd like to ask that question. Okay. Oh, it's not really a question, but we have seen the elegant trogon in Madera Canyon in the winter. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Just down the hill from the uh, 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 oh, what's the name of the birding place there with the with the viewing area. Oh, uh, yeah, I know which one you're talking about. One of those little bed breakfasts. Anyway, you'll see if you drive, if, if he's around, you'll see people set up with their with their uh, long lens uh, telephone cameras and everything right alongside the road. Right, when Tim and I were down there, there were tons of people there uh, looking at it. Uh, we almost gave up and, uh, you know, so if you're looking for that trogon, just if it's uh, vocalizing, listen for a barking sound like a dog. <laughs> yep. And there's uh, the Bog Springs campground just up the hill from where you see the trogon. It has, a, I don't know, about 20 spaces for tents. And, and they say small trailers, but I think you could get a 29 footer in there, at least in some of the places. Okay, yeah, good point. Yeah, there is that nice campground there uh, just before you get to Santa Rita Lodge on the left-hand side right. of the as you're going yeah. up. Yeah. So, so Mike? Yes? I, I had a question. Uh, at okay. the very beginning, you mentioned Santa Cruz Flats is you know, one, of, one of the places for birding. And you mentioned the wedge rump storm petrel. And I can only think of storm petrels being... Uh, in the ocean on the coast. So so they come in as far as the Tucson area? Uh, this, uh, if it was on that list, let me see if I can get back to that list. I, I know it's a very, very beginning, but you, right. you wedge from Sturm Petrel, and I, I, I was just so surprised to see a Storm Petrel being inland on a list. Yeah, a wedge from Storm Petrel, yeah, for some reason, uh, it's been uh, documented by the Arizona Field Ornithologist in two 2019. I mean, some of these things are really 
Yeah, I would never expect them. Buddy Turnstone. Uh, yeah, some very interesting birds that have been seen out there. Yeah, but th thanks, thanks for uh, kind of in detail what what that sighting meant because, like you said, it'd be very rare. Yes, very rare. Yeah, these are some of the rare birds that have been reported there. Yeah. I don't see any other uh, questions in chat, um, but I just wanted to th thank you because I couldn't uh, get my uh, video on in time, but your presentation was absolutely fantastic. I learned so many places to go birding in Arizona, uh, Arizona that I've never heard of. Uh, because I've only gone, you know, in the spring, and like the April, you know, April, May time. So I think we all need to think about a winter birding trip to Arizona. Yes, and when I went there in uh, February, this past February, I had, we weren't in tents birding, but we were there for six days, and I had 110 species. Mm, nice. Uh, without, uh, you know, spending all day, every day doing it. By the way, Kathy, if anybody would like to get in touch with me, you have any other questions, I could only cover about 100 of the places that are down there. But if you <laughs> have more information on places to go or any questions, you can get hold of me at Salem Audubon Society at gmail.com. Feel free to reach out to me and I'd be happy to answer any questions or send you information. I thought you, uh, by including the maps and, and a detail of some of the birding sites that you went to, uh, very informative and uh, makes us all want to get to Arizona soon. Oh, great. Uh, so turn, turning it over back to